Welcome, RLS Hoff. Thank you so much for being here today. We're super excited to get to interview you. I would love if you could introduce yourself. My name is RLS Hoff, or at least that's what I use for my uh, name for my books. And I am a writer of young adult science fiction and fantasy with uh, Strange Worlds, Stranger Creatures, um, bits of romance, and princesses, of course. A lot. Could you tell us what your books are about? So I have a, a science fiction um, series. Um, that one will have three. Right now, two are out. Well, by the time this comes out, maybe all three. We'll see. Um, and that one is about um, some teenagers who live on basically a generation ship, one of those ships that's left Earth and is seeking a new home, a new planet. But they are close to the planet side. So their ship has been traveling for a zillion years. And um, there are some issues with their society. Things are breaking down, um, not just the ship, but also in the society. And uh, uh, one of my main character really, really wants to be part of the group that helps colonize the planet. And her family is really, really not cool with that. So, um, yeah. So that's that series. Uh, you know, the first book is how she gets onto the colony team. The second book is kind of traveling there. And the third book is some of the adventures with starting life in a new world. And then we've got one of her friends who stays on the main ship and trying to make that work, um, trying to make the, the old world a better place. So, and then I have some fantasy. Um, uh, the um, well, Songs of Healing is um, in my Decrandia Chronicles. So I have a, um, I have a contemporary society that's kind of a constitutional monarchy where uh, there are two kings and queens, well, two, two royal houses, one that's war, one that's peace, and they're about as divided as uh, political parties in our country. Um, and um, and uh, they have forgotten magic, but it starts to impinge on their world. And um, my heroes have to learn to remember the things they've forgotten and also learn to cooperate so they can deal with it. A lot. What inspired you to write your books? Well, it's different for the different ones. For Songs of Healing and the Decrandia Chronicles, it was, I love fairy tales, um, but you know, the old ones, the ones that have been passed down for years, they were set in essentially a world like people were living in, but with elements of magic. And I kind of wondered why we didn't have that in our work, you know, modern stories like that. You got to remember when I started that book, I was still young myself. And this was like pre Harry Potter and a lot of the paranormal that has come since. Um, and so there wasn't a lot of magic now. Um, of course, since that time, there's plenty. Um, <laughs> like everybody had the same idea at the same time. So it's not as unique as it was, but I think that's kind of where it started. So I think of it as a modern fairy tale, as a a, um, a magic story in our time. Love that. Yeah. I think for the science fiction series, a lot of the different things went into it. You know, um, there were some things from the news. Um, there were one of the many in my lifetimes, like race riot. There was... Um, the beginning of privatization of space. Um, there was um, uh, some thinking about, um, uh, I was living in China at the time. So there's some amount of like the, the one child policy or if you have two child policy, and how that affects your whole social structure. And then, of course, I had a character. And so you, you kind of put all these things. Uh, I think the other thing was um, the idea of kind of an artist living in an engineer's world. Um, so in, in a world, like I think ours is becoming this way. We're increasingly um, a lot of things run by scientists and engineers. And is there still a value 
for people who think differently, more creatively. And so that was kind of the like, well, what if we kind of all those things went into a pot and they kind of percolated and then this story came. <laughs> love it, love it, love it. When writing your book, books, sorry, who were you thinking of when it comes to who your book is for? Books. I tend to think of my my ideal audience is, is a girl like the one I was. So nerdy, um, a bit artistic into things like music and arts and drama. Um, and probably around, you know, 11 to 14, maybe, maybe a little older, but around that age. How long have you been writing and what made you really sit down and start? I have been writing since my senior year of high school, like regularly. I did little bits of things before that, but I've been regularly writing since my senior year of high school, which for me is longer ago than I really want to admit. (laughs) Um, uh, No, at, at least 30 years. And what made me start, I think, you know, I had this, I had a study hall. I had never had a high study hall in high school, but my my senior year of high school, my second semester, I wound up with this study hall. And I um I didn't know what to do with myself. I got myself some work in the library. So I was reshelving books and that was fun because you get to see all the books and play around with them. Um, but a lot of the time I was just sitting there. And so I'd been interested in writing and I started writing this book. And then at lunchtime I would read it to my friends. Um and that kind of got a half but started and it, the interest and yeah. Uh, what's your schedule like when you're writing a book? Oh, goodness. You know, it depends. Okay, what's it supposed to be and what it actually is? Completely different thing. But I try to get a little bit of writing time every day. For a while there, I was doing well with a a group that met first thing in the morning, but I'm having trouble getting up at the 5.30. So (laughs) that's not working as well for me. So I was putting in an hour or two every morning um, just before I started my day. And that's how I get the draft done. I also will sometimes do a, like right now I'm on a weekend where I spent some concentrated writing time getting stuff into the notebooks. So that's the, um, like the getting it onto paper the first time. Um, and that has changed some over the years, but for me, it helps if I can find something that allows me to do it fairly frequently, if not every day, often. Um, but then, of course, for me, I write longhand, so then it has to get into the computer. Um, so, you know, sometimes with my writing schedule, I'll start by typing yesterday's. And so it's fresh in my mind, and then I'll start on today's. Um sometimes I'll go back to it later, you know, like I'll put in four chapters at once or whatever. And then um, once it's in the computer, I I try to, my critique group goes through them for um, uh, feedback and, you know, help with kind of big picture issues. And, um, and once I've been through that for a round or two, and I'm sure that it's okay, I will sometimes send it to beta readers. Um, a couple, of, you know, especially, especially try to find, you know, young people, because <laughs> I am no longer young. Um, <laughs> and, um, but also, also older people do, um, to get a little more feedback. And then I'll incorporate that and then send to my editor who um, cleans up the boo-boos. <laughs> <Of that. laughs> what do you need in your writing space to help you stay focused? Oh, I, it actually, my writing space is often like a box. So um, I have no windows. Um, because if I had a window, <laughs> I wouldn't write. Um, Although sometimes, you know, I actually do better lying on the floor or on a bed or something when I'm, when I'm doing the longhand bit. Um, When I had tiny kids, I got into the habit of being able to write anywhere. And for 
almost any length of time. So I can get into focus pretty fast, you know, as long as nobody's there and I don't have other jobs I'm supposed to be doing. Um, <laughs> um, I can I can focus pretty well. I mean, you know, I was riding in the back of taxis and on buses and, you know, when the kids were little because, and I'm a little bit out of that habit. So sometimes it takes me a little longer, but I think once you learn it, you can snap into that. that. What is your favorite writing snack or drink? Um, I don't usually do writing snacks because they make my fingers sticky and then the pencils and but um, I, I drink a lot of Diet Dr. Pepper, a lot. <laughs> I love that. that. That's my go-to as well. <laughs> uh, <laughs> mine came from a two-liter, so it just looks like a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> love well, it. What type of books do you personally enjoy reading? Well, my favorites are fantasy and science fiction and young adult. But I love all kinds of fiction. I am particularly, besides those, I also like historical, cozy mysteries, uh, clean romance. I like, sometimes I like not as clean romance, but usually I like it clean. Um, I, I'll try almost anything that's fiction. Um, I'm not usually a super huge fan of horror, um, <laughs> but, but um, in, the, in the fiction, most things I enjoy. And um, I also sometimes like nonfiction and like history or memoir, um, but mostly I stick to fiction. Um, yeah. Are there any books or authors that inspired you to become a writer? I really, really love Tolkien, Madeline L'Engle. Um, I really enjoy... Um, well, there's so many good books. I mean, there's there's books that I loved that I don't know if they inspired me to become a writer, but they're, you know, part of your soul. <laughs> like <laughs> like all of the um all of the Anne of Green Gables books and um uh all the Jane Austens, um a fair number of the um of Louise Nails. Um uh, and of course, I've found things as I've gotten older that I have loved that I wish I had had when I was a kid. I mean, I've recently been reading some Octavia Butler um, and her uh, Lilith Brood and so amazing. And I could totally have been reading it as a kid, but I didn't know about it. Um, I have enjoyed Anne McCaffrey as an adult and, you know, it wasn't available. Or it, it was available, but I didn't know. Um, and then, of course, there are the people who weren't around when I was a kid, like Kate DiCamillo, like all of Kate DiCamillo's books I adore, or um, The Girl Who Drank the Moon, um, such a lovely, lovely book. Or I just read one called Secrets, Lies, and Algebra. Um, it was so much fun. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so... The world is full of lovely books, and I enjoy them. <laughs> <laughs> what type of books did you grow up reading? Did you have an all-time favorite? Oh, I had too many. I, I did completely wear out at least two sets, like complete sets of, um, <laughs> of the Narnia books. Um. <laughs> Like, like they were paperback and I killed them. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> uh, and I've, I've done that with several sets of Tolkien as well. I finally got them in hardback. I'm like, you know, there is a purpose for hardback and this is it. <laughs> um, my Jane Austens are hardback too. Um, I don't know. I, um, I read this, uh, some, um, it was George MacDonald the Light Prince, but that was just a short story. That I liked rereading and rereading. Um, yeah. On the I, I, you know, when I, 
Oh, sorry. I was just going to say when I find a book I love, I tend to read it many times. Um, as an adult, or do you have a favorite series or author that if something comes out from them that you're just going to grab it no matter what it is? Hmm. I will, there I have some authors that I will find it. I won't necessarily buy it because I cannot afford to do that with all of the authors that I would like to, but you know, I will check it out from the library. So like the Kate DiCamillo, um, I do that with the JK Rowling stuff and with her, um, her mysteries too, which are under the different pen, pen name Galbraith. Um, I do it with, um, what is her name? Luann Smith? It does the Vine Witch series, which, but of course I've, I've met her, but they are so good. I think I, when, I think when I know the author, I might actually, I'll try to purchase them if I can, As, especially if, you know, they're not big name and yeah. Um, yeah. Love that you bring up the libraries though. A lot of people don't realize that that is a resource that they can use. Oh, I love libraries. When I lived in China, they didn't really have them. And it's one of the things that I missed most about when I lived there. I mean, there's things that when I'm here, I miss about there. When I was there, one of the things I missed most about America was the libraries. The, the chance to just check out whatever and, and read so much. And actually, I just found out that my Songs of Healing is going to be in the digital collection for my local library. So that's so exciting, like for Colorado. But yeah, libraries are wonderful. What would you tell someone just starting out with reading again? Find books you enjoy. Like you won't stick with it if you don't like them, right? So, um, and it's okay to write, read short if, that's more your style. Like if, if you're more into short stories or magazines or, or manga, I mean, you know, <laughs> whatever, you know, if, if, if it helps you to have the pictures, cool, use the pictures. Um, it, there's no judgment, you know, any kind of reading is good reading. On the other side of that, what would you tell someone just starting to write their own book? I would say stick with it. Um, I, uh, that, that, you know, it's, especially if you're writing novels, which many of us do, um, it's a long process. So, you know, don't assume you're going to be done in a day or a week or a month. <laughs> like it, it takes time. Um, and I would recommend finding other people who write, um, and especially people who are known for being encouraging. You know, um, you can, um, it, like, I'm a member of um, the Society of Children's Book Writing Illustrators and uh, Rocky Mountain Writers, which are a couple of the groups that I'm, of course, Rocky Mountain is local for me. Um, and, um, and, and they helped me find critique groups so I can meet up with people who are other writers and help, um, you know, for me, one of the best things is a deadline. Like you have to show 20 pages every couple of weeks. So that's useful. But um, also those are people who know, okay, well, once you've got this thing, you know, and you've written the end, what more do you still have to do before it's actually ready to be a book? And they can help you do those things whether you're going to go with a, a self-publishing route like I have, or whether you're going to go traditional, they can help you with blurbs and with query letters and with polishing it so that it's ready to publish and, you know, finding an agent if you need an agent, but they, if you meet other people who are in the industry, they can help you with all those bits. You can also find a lot of that information online, which, but I think it helps to have people. Love. Um, what is one thing people are generally surprised to find out about you? Well, 
they're often surprised to find out that I write books because I, you know, don't tell people around me. But if I, if people just see me and they haven't met me before, they, you know, don't necessarily know, for example, that I, I speak Chinese pretty well because you wouldn't imagine it to look at me. Um, <laughs> um, uh, yeah, that's one of the big ones. Um, is there anything you would like to say or add? I cannot think of anything right now. <laughs> Sorry. No worries. <laughs> um, where's the best place for readers to find your book? I know some readers love signed copies. Is that an option and the best place to connect with you? Okay. For to just to find my books easily, you can get them on Amazon, all of them. Um, there are other, um, you can find them in other outlets. If you want a signed copy, you can buy them on my website which is pencilprincessworkshop.com. Um, there's a shop and you can, you know, ask for it to be signed. You know, the, the books that come directly from me. Um, yeah, it's, <laughs> if you buy it from Amazon, there's usually no signature. <laughs> Although I could sign a book plate or something and send it to you if you, um, you know, if a reader wanted that and didn't, you know, bought it someplace else. I mean, you could also get them on Barnes and Noble or somewhere. And if, if they found them there and wanted something like that, I could, I could do a book plate. Be in touch with me. I'm on Facebook under RLS Hoff and Instagram under RLS Hoff and Twitter under RLS Hoff. And I'm also on Goodreads if you'd like to just share book reviews and things like that. Yeah, you can see what I'm reading. And notice that it's, you know, pretty eclectic. <laughs> um, well, thank you so much for being here today. We'll be sure to drop those links into the show notes. That way it's easy for people to find you and your amazing books. And again, thank you so much for being here today. Oh, you're welcome. Thanks for having me. It was really fun.